Hi, Cyclops FPV here and welcome to my review on the, um, well, more of an overview really of my T Jumper T-Lite um, V2 ELRS um, my, my module uh, the Mobula 7 and the bits that you get with it so we'll start off with the Mobula 7 so um, I'm not going to go too in depth with it, the motors and all that, because like by now everyone knows what's inside it and everything. Uh, this is the ELRS version, and uh, you get you get some basic bits with it, spare props which uh, which are drilled out to one and a half mil, uh, a screwdriver, some sort of jumper pin. Uh, and some spare screws and a, a, a really rubbish prop remover tool which bends when you use it. You also get this balance board which I won't be using personally. Oh, that's what, what the uh, the jumper does. It goes on there. Um, yeah, I won't be using these. I'll, I'll use a hobby grade charger. I'll use my, um, my Whoopstar uh, charger. So, right. So, I encountered a few problems with this. Now I bought a Mobula 7 and the uh, the Jumper T light, thinking that um, they're going to bound up straight away and that uh, I can go out and fly. How wrong I was. Um, right, well the first thing I had to do was I had to go in the Lewis script and on beta flight and plug everything in and find out what versions I'm running on. I was running on V2. Now I'm new to this. But I know enough that um, anything that's uh, ELRS V2 is compatible. It's just moved on to V version 3. And version 1 will not... Um, if you've got a version 2 controller and a version 1 uh, receiver or a quad or whatever, it won't, it won't, um, it won't communicate. So what you have to do is you have to um, download the latest version and uh, do all your bits and pieces on that. I didn't download anything on this. I didn't. Um, I didn't set a bind phrase, a model match, or anything like that. It wasn't until I got this, which which I was going to get anyway. To put on the back of the jumper because this will this goes up to 500 um, hertz and down to 250. I think it's 100, 150, and 50. Um, and this this was this is brilliant. It's got no fan in it. It's got a um, heat sink, I believe, and it uses a diamond antenna, which I'll probably swap out for a, a Moxan. But anyway. It just goes on the back of there like like so and you go through the Lewis scripts you you change the uh, the settings on the beta flight and uh, you switch the internal module off and well you turn it you turn the uh, radio off and the the external module on and uh, if you get the uh, once you bind it which which is easy enough, you go and beat a flight, you, you bind the uh, quad, you go into your Lewis scripts on here and you bind the uh, you bind through that. And if the red light stays on, you know you you know you're you're bound. You'll also get a signal that comes up on here. You'll get like a like a mask, uh, like like what you get on your, your phone. You'll get like um, a series of bars. That tells you you got um, you got a link. You got you got um, antenna power and all that. I didn't. When I did it, I got the um, bound light that stayed on solid red. And you'll know because it's round about here somewhere. It comes on. I, I usually look through here, and you can see the light come on now. Um, I had stick movements, but I didn't have any um, switches. None of the switches would work. Now, after a long series of mucking about, and the answer was in front of me all the time, in beta flight, I got a red 
flag warning saying um, calibrate accelerometer. As soon as I did that, everything worked, and I just went from there. So all my switches, um, blah de blah. I did not, as I said, I did not download nothing. I didn't change the Lewis scripts or anything. This is this this is all done without a computer. Um, as long as you've got V2 on on both models, doesn't matter what which um, which one it is, like V V1.4 or whatever. As long as it's V2, it starts with V2. You're you're okay. You don't need to do nothing. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so I set them once I've got everything working and I've got the signal and and. Um, I knew I knew everything worked. The first thing was to try your arm switch, and the arm switch has to be in the highest position um, for it to work. And then I uh, I got my flip over crash middle middle button, my modes, which is acro, horizon, and uh, stabilized, which I never use, and then finally my bleeper, which is there. All hunky dory works lovely. I took this for a flight the other day, um, which was I, I rushed to to get it done, and uh, I was just mucking about with things, and I realised that um, I I I for some reason I couldn't tell what milliwatts I was on the uh, VTX. Again, I had to go back into beta flight and set everything up. And uh, I've got I've got it down to a uh, hundred milliwatts, and because I'm trying to save battery power and everything, um, and when I disarm, it will automatically go down to twenty five. Otherwise, this gets very hot, and you can get if you're sitting there mucking about, um, and it's you know, and it's just sitting there getting hotter and hotter, you'll get a brown out. Because I've had that loads of times, so that's what I did. I set it. I set it so when I disarm, it goes down to 25 milliwatts, and everything's okay. It goes up to 400 milliwatts, but I really, it it does get a bit warm. Now the only thing about this is, if you set this to, this to 250 hertz, and the TX power on 100, this will make your TX supposedly go up to 500 milliwatts. Whether it does or not, I don't know, but it does say on here it, it goes up to 500 milliwatts. I've turned it down to 100 because 100 is plenty far enough. Um, the only thing is, this uses a single 18650 battery, which is 4.2 volts. This gets very hot. It gets uncomfortably hot and it will drain the transmitter very, very quickly. Um, Probably within half an hour, maybe I don't know, 45 minutes, it will it will drain the whole battery. It it just gets hot, so I've had to turn everything down um, in order to uh, make it, you know, um, reasonably function functionable, so I can I can fly for quite a few packs. Um, the other thing I noticed as well, this is very fussy on batteries. This is a this is a GMB um, 520, uh, which it will run on. It's uh, it's quite it's quite a loose fit. I mean, it fits, but it's I have had it sliding back and forwards a couple of times. I've tried some of the others. Um, I tried uh, a Tattoo uh, Goldline, uh, you know, the racing one, and that was a slightly too thick. It would fit on there, but it felt like it was stretching the uh, battery tray. I also tried the uh, Crazy Pony 600 milliamp an hour batteries. They also seemed a little bit thick. The Emacs ones, which is only a 450, they they go in okay, but being a 450, you don't really get a lot of time. Um, and that's that's about it really. This flies wonderful. It's you can either do slow cruisy flights on it, or you can do um, full acro. I had no your prop wash or anything like that. I've got, I've drilled out these. These are um, 
the Z props by by newbie drone and uh, I've I've heard that these are supposed to be quite quite good. They're high high pitch props and being 20,000 kV motors on this it will go nice but you have to drill the hubs out. The trouble is the hubs are a hub within a hub. They um they're very weak. I don't know if this camera will pick it up but can you see it's like a hub within a hub and it's got three spokes that come out. Now when you drill that middle out to fit to fit the shaft on this it becomes even weaker. Now the only good thing is that this is a ducted prop so you're not going to be hitting much but if you if you had this on an open prop quad which this can be converted to uh, like I did with the um, Mobula 6 which is on my video I did um, I did a freestyle version of this without ducks this will this I may buy a second one and do it with this with these motors on it it'll work out cheaper and it'll fly better as well but yeah if you hit something with this this is going to definitely break and it's going to break at the hub the hub will stay on the motors but the props will break off it's very very weak but I've yet to try that. I've, I've heard that uh, you can get quite a lot of thrust out of these. But for um, by blades, this flies wicked. It, it, it really does um, handle acro and slow flying really well. As for range, I haven't really tested that yet. Uh, I don't expect much more than 600 meters. Um, bump the power up. I don't know. You might get you might get um, a kilometer and a half out of it something like that um, the the trouble is the ceramic uh, antennas in these uh, they're then they're, they're a lot better than free sky obviously but the uh, the range ain't you know miles and miles and miles but um, it it will it will um, perform but I, I've done I've converted more to ELRS for penetration than I have for range um, although the range is handy it's more the penetration that I'm after going around trees and buildings and going further out that's that's what ELRS is for me um, I, I was never a long-range flyer anyway I'll, I'll get too panicky because if something goes wrong you've got further to go to look for it and that's even if you'll ever find it so you know no, no point really well not for me anyway but yeah so that's that's the uh the jumper t light good radio but limited battery life you got to remember it's only a single battery but that that's fine for what i'll be doing um if you're getting one of them get a nano get a nano module it'll it'll it will change this it will make it twice as good you get more options on the menu that will come up on the lure script you can up your TX power you you got like a button there that's a five-way button and then you got the enter button in the middle so you can you can scroll up and down and all that it tells you your packet rates and you can change your um, your Hertz and all that um, but it does get hot if you got it on high power so watch that um, yeah and that's about it really I've got I did a video the other day um, and I'll probably be doing more so if you want to go and see that that was more of a shakedown test for the quad not not so much the um, the the quad uh, the uh, controller but um, that that went okay um, I learned quite a lot from that and that was my first time I flew ELRS and uh, the Mobula 7 so that worked out really good and I'm converted and you should be too because it's great bit of a headache to learn but I went on Oscar I think it's Oscar Liang site tells you all about it what your setting should be what you should set be to fly out blah 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 go on that read it learn it because that's what I did it took me a week and um, I, I if I can do it anyone can do it but this is this is a this is a game changer basically anyway enough waffling on for me I'll be putting more more videos up uh, to do with this sort of stuff and what it's capable of and all that 
I've only done one flight on this, so, well, two, and, um, yeah, I'm hooked. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one, and see you later. Bye.